This program is uh, an annual program where we honor long-term citizens who have really made substantial uh, improvements or projects for the town of Middlesex. And of course, Lee and his family have lived here forever. <laughs> so, so anyway, and uh, there's a committee that selects honorees and it's on your program. But this year there was uh, you know, no doubt about who our honoree is going to be. So today, you know, we not only honor, but we celebrate the wonderful life of uh, Lee Whitty. He really was something. So, and here we have uh, our, our guys, the, the program is really presented by the town of Middlesex, the ambulance and fire department, uh, and the Middlesex Heritage Group. So the ambulance and fire department is recognized by, is, is represented uh, by Bob Mincher here. And uh, actually Bob was the, the first uh, responder at the time we died. And he was also, uh, for a long period of time, came with CPR. So, Bob's a great guy. And I really appreciate Bob because he's one of the few guys I don't have to look up to. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, representing the uh, Middlesex Heritage Group is uh, Wynn Harper. Now, Wynn has been with us like eight years, and he really made some great improvements. He's helped us in many, many ways. Wynn is a retired colonel of the Marine Corps. He had uh, two tours of Vietnam, Purple Heart, okay? And even more important, he was a high school football player who played against uh, Joe Lehman. <laughs> but he, did, he told me the score was like 44 to nothing. <laughs> so anyway, so these are our, our buddies here. I'm not going to say a lot about Lee. Uh, he was, uh, well, our, our, our group meets here every Wednesday morning. It's supposed to be 9 o'clock. And I would be here at 8 o'clock. And I would never be the first guy here. The league would always be here. And, uh, you know, you talk about best friends. I, I say he was the best friend. But I'm sure there's many of you out here who thought of Lee as a best friend. So, uh, so today we should celebrate his life. This is not a morning affair. This is something to celebrate all these things for our town. And, uh, and with that, uh, Corey, are you here? Could you come up, please? I will present you. We have a, a traditional plaque, which uh, on it, it says, we the people of Middlesex appreciate and honor this dedicated system. Uh, citizen, year 2022, we win. Thank you very much.
we have pictures, we have the attic upstairs, we have some relics from the town, and we'd like to have more people get involved in this process. We're planning to get a copy of Ancestry.com so this individual can do research on their family trees in the uh, town hall and also in the library. Uh, the most important book we have there is Ruth Clark's History and Legends of Middlesex. If you want to know if that is the Bible of the town of Middlesex, if you've not read that book, if you want to get a copy, you can sell it. But it goes to our volunteer uh, efforts. Uh, our next event is Seneca Harris Day on September 3rd. That uh, will be at the Old Rackers Corner School. Peter Jemison, the former site manager at Ganondigan, will speak. It's a family friendly event. We're going to have, uh, did I mispronounce it? I said you've been practicing. <laughs> you agree. <laughs> have a hard time with Jemison. You know, <laughs> And uh, Bill Krause is the alligator from River Dancer will perform. And it'll be free ice cream and water. And it's a family event. And we'd love to have everybody there uh, between 2 and 4 p.m. on the 3rd of September. And anyone who wants to be a volunteer, if you just show up on Wednesday morning, if you want to spend some time with us, I get there around quarter to 10 because we have a break at 10 o'clock where we have coffee. <laughs> I've never missed that. We've also been trying to establish a uh, portal history program. We have copies of all the veterans' history project interviews with local servicemen. Uh, we have some video and audio tapes of local citizens, but we'd like to have more. If you'd like to be a part of that, again, if you'd like to be interviewed by us uh, for the history of the town, long-term residents, I've been here. We've been here 12 years now. Uh, we'll never be locals. I still have people tell me, I asked the direction, we go to Smith's, used to live, you turn right. <laughs> it doesn't help you very much. <laughs> and the importance of oral history was emphasized by Alex Haley, who wrote The Roots. He said, when an old person dies, it's like a library burning down. Lee Williams was a liar. He was an encyclopedia. <laughs> he was our best historian. He could remember things that nobody else could remember. He had an incredible memory for names of people, places, and events. And he was a wonderful storyteller. If you ask a question over here, Lee would go around like this. He'd get back over there. He'd get the history of the entire town every time he'd come. <laughs> I do believe, from my own personal knowledge, that he is related to everyone in this town. <laughs> Except for my wife and I, and I think if we go back far enough in history, we probably are cousins. <laughs> we did, I say, Elizabeth and I moved here 12 years ago, and the first thing I learned was that using Lee's name at the county courthouse was a key to getting great service. <laughs> he was known by everybody. Lee was an Eagle Scout. An athlete, a scholar, a soldier, a politician, a philosopher, a business leader, and the unofficial mayor of Nine Valley. <laughs> he was a tireless, he was a tireless worker and doer who got things done for individuals, the town, and the community. As a good scout, an able scout, he was always prepared. And he served in the army and he honored their values of duty, honor, and adventure. Lee was a heroic figure. And like one of the, my favorite hero, Superman, he exemplified the values of truth, justice, and the American way. Simply stated, Lee was a community leader who was missed by every one of us as a friend and as a leader. We have a line of friends, family, and colleagues who are going to celebrate Lee's life. They will look detail how he served us all, how he served individuals, the community, the town, the county, the state, and our great nation, and how he had fun along the way. He had a tremendous sense of humor. I'd like to introduce uh, Jack Prendergast, the chairman of the Gates County Republican Party, and he will introduce the state senator.
Okay, well, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Senator Town here in a second. And then after he speaks and when the public speaks, I will come back and speak for my great friend, Lee Williams. But uh, over the years, I know you've heard it said, I heard it said, they say if you want to have a large funeral, die young. Well, I think the testimony yesterday at the center, the community center over in Vine Valley, I don't know what the head count was over there, but uh, there had to be hundreds of people that came. And uh, Lee has touched everybody's life. Certainly in this room, the people that were there yesterday, they had people from his Ben girls from, from uh, down in Ben County. He, he was a not a quiet man because he was very firm, but he worked hard quietly and he talked. He was not a He just just such a wonderful man. So I'll come back to that. I have a few stories to leave, some of which are, are a little humorous, and all of which I'll be the hero and he won't be. <laughs> Sorry, Lee. So we prefer to do the same thing. So with that, uh, we have. Uh, the committee had talked about getting uh, New York State to recognize Lee for everything he has done. And with that, we went uh, to very good friends of ours, uh, Senator Tom O'Meara, who's here, who will stand up here in a second, and then Phil Palmasano, who's our assemblyman. Now, uh, Phil had uh, to be, I was just saying, in the North Country over the weekend. He had family members that passed away and was not able to be here, but he was instrumental in working uh, through, uh, through Sarah Latin, uh, who's Tom's uh, person in the office, keeps him straight, and we were able to get a proclamation. So with that time, we come forward, and we'll turn this over to you. Dedicated member of his community. 
have a bunch of copies here for uh, family. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of whereas clauses, and there's a lot of people to speak today, so I won't uh, uh, belabor uh, the reading of this, but it was truly an honor uh, for us to be able to get this for Lee uh, and his family. Uh, and we want to present uh, this to, uh, to Corey. Uh, if you could come up and uh, grab this on behalf of uh, uh, the entire New York State, New York State legislature, uh, myself and some of Tom Sano, uh, it's an honor to be able to provide this in memory of uh, your father.
Second Amendment rights were very important to myself. We got involved in that, so that's many, many years ago. And of course, Lee was an integral part of that, as Bill and Sue and others. Uh, Second Amendment is so important today. So we, we've had years together there. A lot of good memories, a lot of, you know, damn those little people from Tom Fisher's time. And certainly not Bill, they're on our side. But there are a lot of bad politicians of which we spoke and not so well. So, then uh, the one thing in my working career, and then afterwards I had a second career where I was at a university for a while, but then when I retired, then I became the supervisor for the town of Benton, which I still am. Then uh, with the scope and so forth, I got to know a lot of the people over here in Middlesex because Benton was very aggressive putting water lines in and so forth. And I spoke a few times over here on how you get water lines in, etc. So I got to meet some of these other folks over here, Dan and uh, the others. So then they would have me come over for the fly-in donor run, I guess it's called. <laughs> it's amazing. People fly into Middlesex Airport from around sometimes. 20, 30, 20, there. And I don't fly, so I didn't, and I'm not going to jump out of a plane and parachute in, so I dropped it. <laughs> and if you go over there and uh, you give them a couple bucks, you drink as much water or coffee as you want, and you get a donut. And so people spend their money flying in from around the state or maybe in Pennsylvania. And so that's just another thing. Leaves always there. And then that's on Friday morning. And then Saturday morning, these guys have have a breakfast over in Canada along the Lake Cottage City. So I go over there often, or often for me, or for my wife says, you go in there again, say, oh, well, those are good guys. <laughs> so we go over there. And so I, I was around Lee a lot. Lee was around us a lot. And then uh, we've been going to our high school with our grandsons. Uh, I have five. They, they're kind of in the middle of going through. So then uh, Lee and Dan, and especially would be following our basketball team. We had a very successful couple of years here with basketball. They love to come and, and yell at the referees. I have to stay on top of them, but uh, you know, Dan the politicians, Dan the referees are second. I guess what can you say. So I've known him on a lot of things, but the one thing that he loved to do, I got involved in politics when I retired from the university, both at the local level. But then uh, I'm the chairman of the Republican Party. And I, for the last 10 or years or so, I wasn't always the chairman, but I got myself involved where I was able to go to state, you know, I'd be a state committee person. So I'd be in Albany or maybe in New York City when people were being nominated. And we loved to go to those. So he and I would group together, you know, either in, in Albany, if the meeting was in Albany, or down in uh, White Plains or down on Long Island, and uh, several times we went down to Washington, D.C. Uh, with Tom, uh, so once or twice to Washington with Tom Reed, our then congressman. And we would go around and, and so forth. And one of the things Lee always liked about me is that I always put my hand up. Everybody's so timid around politicians. Don't be. They need, they need to be uh, taught. And the citizens have to teach them. So you got to raise your hand. And, and uh, I remember we were sitting in, I think it was, I don't know, it had to be some club right off the, the uh, White House there for congressmen or whatever. They brought in a couple people and nobody would ask a question. And I raised my hand for the guy. And I found out he was a house waiting to me. And I said, You, I said, I don't want to use the term bastard. That's what you are. I said, you had, in the first two years of Trump's thing, you had the presidency, the Senate, and the Congress. And you sat on your ass. And Tom, you know, was watching. Tom said, you know, there are a lot of situations. And I said, no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. And so that's what I would do. And Lee loved it. <laughs> he just thought that that was great. And I said, no. That's what I'm thinking, that's what you got to tell these guys. So I had a long, 
very, very interesting time will be, but I can tell you that uh, while we were driving or whatever we were going, anytime I was with him, he was always talking about his son in New Zealand. How much he loved him, how much he missed him, and how he liked him. He went down there several times. Can't imagine getting away from the winter here so you go to the summer in New Zealand. It doesn't sound bad to me. And, uh, but his, he was a family man, a father, most of all, and that's how I'm sure he would want to be remembered. And his brothers and his mom were very important to him. So those are my memories of him, but he was nothing but a great guy. And I don't think you ever heard him say a bad word about anybody but a politician. <laughs>
After that, you know, after about the fourth grade up here, we, the rest of us spent growing up down in uh, South Florida, so, and I still live in Florida. But I tried to get up here to see Lee as much as I could. And all of his accomplishments, I heard about all, we talked about once a week, back when we talked that morning uh, when he passed away. But uh, I was really, really, really proud of his accomplishments and everything he did and everything he was doing with the Republican Party, although he didn't convert me. I'm still a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> we tried, but anyways. <laughs> but I think his proudest accomplishment was when he and Bonnie had court. And he's just a fantastic young man. And Camilla keeps him straight. But, uh, I know he always talked about, you know, what Corey was doing or Corey was hiking or, or what, but uh, he was always glad to have him come back. That's about all I got to say, so congratulations, Ron. You're now in the family. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, you know, I miss Lee. Uh, Bob Minster found Lee the, the evening that he passed away, and, and I was right behind him. I was on my way. Uh, Bob had called me and said, Lee's not answering the phone. Lee always answers the phone. He, he just always answers the phone. And Bob had been trying to call him for about three hours. He says, you know where Lee is, what the story is? And I says, no, get over there, I'm on my way. Well, Lee passed away in his dad's chair, his grandfather's chair, actually, which was a very early reclining chair. And he sat there in his living room, leaned back in the chair, and he went to sleep. He said so many times, and I'm, I'm sure Terry will remember this. Terry was like a brother to, to Lee, too. He said, boy, I don't want to go home. I don't, I don't want to be a burden on anybody. I just want to go to sleep in my chair. And that's just what he did. Right here, Fine Valley, Yates County, where he lived, where the people he loved were, uh, that was Lee. I don't know how he arranged it. <laughs> I want to do that. Jeez, that was a great thing. But uh, we're all going to miss Lee. We, we miss him every day as it is. and uh, uh, he, He's just part of us. There's an awful lot of people out here I don't recognize. They may have known my parents. They may have known my grandparents on either side. All of my family came between Rushville, Middlesex, and the valley here, and, and so on, and I've spent a lot of time here, but, but uh, he's, he's truly part of you. You folks are his family, and he came back here because he wanted to be with his family. I'm awful glad to have Corey back. Uh, we don't know how long Corey's going to stay. Anybody can twist his arm that would like to. Uh, he's here for months at least, uh, but it's, it's awful good to have Corey back. I was able to visit him in New Zealand also. Uh, not on my nickel, I was paid to go down there and it just worked out wonderfully that we could get together. But it's awful nice to have Corey back and I know a lot of you know him and please uh, do everything you can to welcome him too. I guess that's what I have to say. Miss Lee, he's my brother. That's the way I look at it. Sure is. Mayor of Vine Valley, he, he, he certainly was. And 
did great uh, getting that and uh, a lot of other things. Uh, involved with him a lot with Scope. Uh, we decided with the, with the Scope group that we should do some uh, safety training with firearms, especially with the revolvers and handguns. And so we got together, and, and he was a big part of that. And every time we did those sessions over in Penny End, Lee would be there. And he was there to help. And uh, he was just such a blessing. And uh, I, I, uh, I just, uh, I miss him already. I just miss him. He, uh, he could walk into a room, and, and he didn't have to say anything. All he had to do was smile. Yeah. And he had a smile that said so much without uttering a word. And uh, he is truly an honorable man. Thank you. I apologize for being a little hesitant, but I was worried about the statute of limitations. <laughs> <laughs>
clearly knew after you know a year of saying I was going to run for political office that who knew really what he was was uh, he was there all the time. He brought me to Pennsylvania a number of different times, um, and I know that he was on the phone with Senator O'Hara's office because he called me up the day he died about 11 o'clock, I think it was, as excited as a new kid because his passion along with all those other things mentioned today, it was also <laughs> South Lake Road. And he called me up all excited. He goes, David, I think I did it. I'm like, what did you do? Goes, I think that Tom O'Hara's office is going to help us get some money for the road. Great. And that was our last conversation. So, now, I've taken up that mantle for Lee, and I continue to call Tom's office and talk to Sarah, <laughs> and she's probably like, Oh, that's guy. That's that guy calling again. The first thing he says is Lee Williams. And that's what I do. That's my introduction to. <laughs> and it gets me in all the time. So I'm going to keep using it as much as I can. I too miss him and was looking forward to his help and tutelage uh, in my fledging career as council wise. Miss him and uh, thanks for letting me speak to you. Short poem, so I think there's half a chance that I can remember it. 
Under the wide starry sky, dig the grave and let me die. Glad did I live and gladly die and laid me down with a will. This be the verse that you grave for me. Home he, he, home he lies where he longed to be. Home is the sailor, home from the sea, and the hunter home on the hill. Lee's ashes are soon to be under his favorite tree stand on his 50-acre plot up on an old sheep pasture on South Hill. When the wind blows from the west on a Sunday morning, I think part of it will show up at the Conservation Club breakfast, mm. <laughs> probably in the shooting gallery where he spent so much time. I envision Lee's soul to be hovering like some drone over Canandaigua Lake, over the cottage, and over those 50 acres on South Hill. And his memory lives here in the hearts and the minds of his friends and family who remain on this shore. <clears throat> Lee and I go back a long ways. He was a bit older than I. His birthday was January 27th of 44, and I was born uh, 48 hours later on January 29th. <laughs> Around the time his mom died, not too long ago, I found an invitation that she had sent to my mom for a birthday party back when Lee turned two in 1946. Uh, I assume we attended. I can't remember. <laughs> in 1949-50, my family lived up above the airport on the house out on 364, uh, what we call the Eaton House, but. Uh, Later on, Wayne and Saber Dutton lived there, and I believe their son and his family lives there now. Lee and his family lived down on Lincoln Avenue in what we call the Middlesex, or Middlebrook William Sikowski compound. <laughs> um, I remember walking across the state road and down to play with, uh, uh, visit and play with Lee back in kindergarten or before we moved over to uh, between here and Potter. It was the days before television and the radio shows of Straight Arrow, Tom Mix, and Sergeant Preston of the Yukon inspired us. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, Lee and I were in Boy Scouts together. He filled his sash with merit badges, and I dropped out because I couldn't learn the Morse code. <laughs> Later on, we played soccer and baseball for Middlesex Valley Central School, and somehow morphed into the class of 62. Bowling and movies, ups and downs. He always had a package of cloves in his glove compartment because he thought that would mask the smell of anything we might have been doing out on the road. <laughs> um, Ken cigarettes, Jenny Cream, and Hey Maple Black Label. Maybe chasing a skirt or two, going to church on Sunday mornings and trying to figure out where, how, and if we fit into the scheme of things in this old world. Those were our roots and we were in and out of each other's lives for a lifetime. Some years we were closer than others. Lee lived on his gentleman's farm on the Reeds Corners Road, and I lived in Weedsport for 25 years, and then moved back to Middlesex. Lee dedicated his life to community service and conservation efforts. He spent his lifetime committing to the Canandaigua Kiwanis, the Middlesex Conversa Conversa Conservation Club, I was there, yeah. That's why I wrote it down. I didn't want to do it. It was a conversation. I told the doctor I had a liver autopsy one time, but I meant to say biopsy. So that's why I wrote it down. So he uh, so spent his life committing to the Canadian of Juanus, the Middlesex Conservation Club. One thing did not even every once in a while. The Scope, the Middle Her Middlesex Heritage Group. The Republican Party and teaching hunter safety courses, <coughs> introducing a new generation to the to hunting, fishing, and the responsibilities of conservation. Many times, Pat and I would go up for a conservation club breakfast and not talk with Lee because he was too busy instructing in the shooting gallery. Very honestly, there were some times when I wondered whether our friendship could endure our philosophical differences. I'm a registered Democrat, and I question the logistics of applying 
1776 fire art policies to the realities of 2022. Lee Scope and the NRA and the Republican Party inside, uh, inside and out. But somehow we endured our differences and the commonality of 78 years of friendship prevailed. I say in the very best sense of the word, our commonalities trumped our differences. <laughs> <laughs> we tripped in and out, but then every two or three weeks we touched base to see how, how we were doing and to see if we could both remember the purple pig. I think that was an effort to uh, check each other for the early uh, advent of senility. <laughs> anyway, Lee called me on the day that he died. Uh, we talked about his health, my health, the, the weather in Georgia, folks back home are adjusted to our permanent move to Georgia. He said he was tired and didn't have the energy that he once had. Some people say I was probably the last person, person he spoke with. I value that because he was my friend for a lifetime. Thank you.
Thank you. I'm Don Alexander, a, a resident of Penny and now, but uh, I lived in Middlesex for many, many years. I knew Lee from the Republican Committee, and he was a taskmaster at that, too. He would bring petitions to me and uh, say, you come to this road, this road, this road, and I'll come this road. And, uh, and, uh, but I wanted you to know that I started out as, when Jean Sharman was chair of the Republican Committee here in Middlesex. And there are traitors among us. <laughs> Every day. 